Hi everyone, and welcome to another episode of Reese Kitchen. Today, in our continuing on in our gluten-free series, we're going to be looking at corn and corn flour and different ways to use it. And the title of today is Corn Flour Just Ain't Corn Flour, because it can be a little confusing. But let's step back a little bit first, remembering that gluten-free means no wheat, oats, barley or rye. And so I get asked all the time, can you have corn? Can you have potato? Can you have butter? And the answer to all of those is yes, but be really careful when it comes to corn flour. So I'd like to step you through for a few minutes today, the different ways that corn flour is able to be purchased. So here we have in front of us some of the most commonly forms of corn flour. The one here on the, my right, which is the whitest one, is what is known in England and Australia as corn flour and in the US as corn starch. It's light, very fine and smooth to touch and is used wonderful as a thickener or as um, in shortbreads, cakes, sponges. But this is what, the one we need to be very careful of. Not all corn flour is made out of corn. In the UK, corn flour is a generic term for a grain flour, and therefore you may find that it's made from wheat, which makes it definitely not gluten-free. So you want corn corn flour. Beside it here, the slightly yellow one, this is maize flour. And maize flour is just less refined than our white corn flour. It's perfect for knockies and other heavier, juicy cooking. It has a wonderful, strong body to be able to hold with a gnocchi. Here, the bright yellow, this is polenta. This is the least refined of the three. Polenta can be made into polenta, um, just with water and butter, but it's also great as a coating, so for your schnitzels or chicken wings, etc. Wonderful, great coating. And then up the back are the slightly more unusual flowers, and they're massa flowers. This is a white massa, so it's, it's Coarseness comes in between that of our corn flour and our maize flour. And this is a blue massa flour. Look at that great color, just perfect. Both of these are perfect for Mexican and South American cooking. And we're going to use them today to make tortillas to make our quesadillas. So let's get started making our quesadillas, which are a great Mexican snack. And to be honest, something I have for lunch most days. So let's run through our ingredients first up. So we've got two cups of massa flour, a pinch of salt, two cups of cold tap water, and then for our filling, which you can have anything that you like, but my personal favourite are black beans, you could have kidney beans or cooked chicken, some salsa, some tin corn kernels, some grated cheese, and then the kicker of all ingredients, freshly cut jalapenos, which I have here. This is a, a fresh jalapeno. I must admit, until a year ago, I thought they just came sliced in a jar. But now that I've found the real fresh ones, so much better as with most things. So let's start making our tortillas. So here we've got our two cups of flour. Now I'm just gonna add a little, a good pinch of salt. Now when I'm making just enough for my lunch, so using half a cup of flour, I don't always add the salt. But we just mix that through. And the same with tortillas as with any dough. Use a knife, not a spoon, to mix it. Now we probably won't need all of the two cups of water, but we'll just add most of it and see how we go. And just let us stir. And what we're after is a nice, soft but firm dough. We want to mix that through. That's a good consistency in the middle there, but I've still got a bit of flour on the outside, so I will need to add just a little bit more water. That looks pretty good. Let's get those last little bits in. Yep, that feels good. This two cups will make 16 tortillas. So now I just use my hands to pull it all together into a all. You can put it out onto the bench if you wanted to, but that just makes a mess and we won't need to. We're not going to need it, we're just pulling it into a ball. So you can see that it forms nicely. We're going to rest that now for 5 to 10 minutes before we divide it up into 16. And now we're ready to start making our tortillas. Now first up, I have here this groovy piece of equipment, which is just a tortilla press that I picked up. 
online actually. So it's two pieces of quite heavy cast iron that are going to be used. If you don't have one of these, you can certainly use a rolling pin. But if you do, we need to make two cartouches of baking paper. Now for those who don't know how to make a cartouche, I'm going to make the second one now and step you through it. It's a really easy way of making a circle. Now normally a cartouche you would use to stop a skin forming on your gravy or even to line the, with brown paper to line the base of your Christmas cake tin. Uh, but today we're gonna to use them for our tortillas. So let's make the second one. So what you need is just a square of uh, greaseproof paper or baking paper and a pair of scissors. So starting with our square of paper, we just fold it in half to make a triangle. And then on the fold side, we fold it in half again. And continuing on that point in half again. And you can keep going. The more folds you make, the more perfect your circle will be. Then when you grab your folded piece of paper, which looks a little bit like a paper aeroplane, you pop the point in the centre of the circle that you want, mark out where the edge is, and simply cut. And we unfold, we have a perfect circle. So now we're up to cutting our dough into 16, which I've just done. Then opening up my press, line one of my beautiful katushas onto the bottom, and look at that, perfect. Now, I take 1 16th of my dough, roll it into a ball, like so. Now you want to pop it just off centre. Next piece of cartouche. Et voila. You can make them slightly bigger or slightly smaller. Now the trick though, that's very important to remember, is that you always take the paper off the dough rather than try and peel the dough off the paper because it'll just crack. So once we've made up 16 of these, we then need to, to fry them off. Just takes 30 seconds on each side to fry, to cook the flour, but we want our pan really hot. So I've got this little skillet heating up for me now. It's coming up, pretty, feeling pretty hot. So peeling the paper off the tortilla, on it goes. Give it a shake, make sure it doesn't stick. Just give it 30 seconds while I press the next one. Okay, and you can see the flour there started to brown off, just perfect. Alright, that one's ready. And now we get to put our quesadillas together. So we can either use a large fry pan or a sandwich press like I have here. And this one's just steaming up nicely for us. Now, just brushing it with a little bit of oil if you like. One of our tortillas. Now, just a swidge of salsa. You can use a commercially produced, but I reckon once you've tasted the one that's on the, my blog there, you're not gonna go back to a commercially produced. Then your beans, chicken, ham. Whatever takes your fancy, really. Corn. My mouth's starting to water, just thinking about this. Now, these are pretty hot, so you wouldn't want too much, but a little bit doesn't hurt. Some cheese to help it all melt together. Over the top. Tortilla. Just a little bit of oil just to help it brown right up. Hear that sizzle. Oh, don't they look good? All right, here's the first one. And now, just making the rest up. All right, so now as we bring the second one out, pop it on my board here. <sighs> Careful, because cheese is nice and hot. Slice them in half. Oh, 
Go! Very hot. And now for the best part with all cooking, the eating. So the trick of these is to see if I can do it without dribbling it all down my chin. Is to get a bit more salsa, a little bit of guacamole, some sour cream, and let's go. That's delicious. And the heat of that jalapeno is fabulous. Till next time, everyone. Ciao.